Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. A warm welcome among all of us gathered for worship here together as the Cloverdale United Church. We who are in this room, we who are online live, we who will partake of worship in the hours and days to come. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, God welcomes you. And so do we. We gather in the light of new life the light of Christ in our midst. The light that more than this candle lighter shines in the darkness. and that no darkness can overcome. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise God in the temple in the highest heaven. Praise. Praise, Praise, Praise God's, God's mighty deeds, deeds and noble, noble majesty. majesty. Praise. Praise God with trumpet blasts, with lute and harp. Praise. Praise, Praise God, God with timbrel and dance, dance with strings and pipes. Praise, praise God with crashing cymbals, with ringing cymbals. All that is alive, praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
together let us pray. Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end, you break through the locks of gated communities and hardened hearts. Accept our doubts, heal our desire for certainty, and by your Spirit's gentle touch, make us a people forgiven and forgiving. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of peace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. Peace be with you who are online, peace may, peace Thelma, and all the rest. Again, good morning and welcome among all of us gathered together as the Cloverdale United Church, wherever we are. I'd invite you to take a look at the announcements about things coming up in the life of our congregation. If you are a, a newer person in our midst, interested in learning more about uh, our congregation, about the United Church of Canada, about um, uh, Christian faith in general, any of that, um, do check out the announcement about uh, upcoming inquirers uh, classes that I'll be hoping to start up in a couple of weeks from now, and uh, I'll base the schedule on that based on the availability of those who are interested. So if you're interested, uh, send me an, uh, an email or, or give me a phone call and let me know and I would, uh, uh, I'll be in touch with you in the next couple of weeks as that goes. Are there other announcements about things? We've, we've reached that little lull right after Easter. We've had a lot going on. We're looking forward to our Mother's Day weekend plant sale where you can come and pick up your plants. There are other uh, uh, United Church women gatherings coming up in the near future and some really interesting online um, opportunities both around um, uh, Worker rights, I think it is, and around um, the situation in Korea. So check out both of the inf uh, announcements about those as well. Matt? Yes, well, Christine. I, I have a couple garden plots still available, twenty dollars. And if you're interested, um, see me or call the office. Great, that's Christine Connell. If you're interested in one of those community garden plots, it's right out front of our um, space here. Talk to her. With that, let us continue in a spirit of worship.
Good morning, everyone. It's now time for our early word. Um, so any friends, um, young, young at heart, uh, anyone who would like to join? I see, I think I see Chris running from upstairs. Self anyone who would like to join? Self-identified young people. Exactly. You anyone who would love to join? Um, as we're waiting for any friends to come forward, um, I will introduce myself. My name is Sarah, and I am our children and youth leader here at Cloverdale United Church. Um, and it's my pleasure to lead the early word occasionally and also do children's church. Come on right up here. Good morning. Hello, welcome. I have some other oh here's oh, another I was like I was like I know Ira is somewhere. Good morning, friends. How are you today? Good, how are you today? Good. Okay, um as always I have a question for you. Have you ever drank with a straw? Yes. yes? Have you ever drank with a straw? Have you ever drank uh, yes. with a straw? Okay, now when we have a straw. Have you ever blown bubbles into your drink? Never. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yes. Every day at school, you blow, have you ever blown bubbles before? Yes. So what actually makes the bubbles in our drink? Air. Air coming out of our lungs, right? So can we imagine for a second, I want everyone, uh, you out here too and you at home, can everyone imagine that you have a cup or a bottle, bottle of water? Okay, use your imagination. Um, a couple of, or a bottle of water, something kind of like this. And then again, let's use our imagination that we have a straw. Okay, make sure your imagination is really powerful. If you got a strong enough imagination, you might imagine a straw like this one. Can you hold this for a moment? Big, big trust right here. Okay, so we are imagining, can you, can you hold it to my mouth? Look at this help. Thank you so much for helping. So we are imagining a straw and we're imagining some water and I'm going to put the water, the straw into the water. Thank you so much. Now what do we imagine is going to happen if I blow? Bubbles, bubbles. What else might happen? My answer is it'll be hot air coming out of the air. <laughs> hot air coming out. Let's see what happens. Okay, ready? Water all over, the water bubbled up and over, which is why I borrowed a bucket. Can you hold this again? Thank you. So, the water bubbled over. The, wa the bottle was filled with water. The air pushed the water out of the bubble, the bottle. Wow, those are hard to say. Last, it's a good uh, tongue twister. Last Sunday, we remembered and celebrated when Jesus rose from the dead. And in this week's story here in Children's Church, we hear about Jesus' first interaction with his friends since the resurrection. And what we hear in this Bible story is that the disciples were afraid. So let's think for a moment that the disciples are kind of like this bottle. And they are filled, instead of being filled with water, they're filled with fear. Well, later in the story, Jesus breathes God's spirit into the disciples. And just like we breathed air into the bottle, and it pushed all of the water out. It pushed the fear out. And just like my breath pushed the water out of the bo bottle, so too did God's spirit push the fear out out of the disciples. The disciples, they had been filled with fear because bad and scary things had happened to their friend Jesus. And then they were even more scared because they didn't know what was happening during the three days that he was dead. And then more scared because they didn't know what was happening when he rose from the dead. But Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into them and their fear was replaced with something much, much better. And the same can happen for us too. When we face scary or situations where we're unsure what's going to happen or when we're worried that there might be bad things happening, we don't need to be filled with fear. We can remember that Jesus has breathed life and his spirit into us. And with every breath we take, 
we can replace that fear with life and fear with hope and worry with his peace. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in Children's Church today. But before we go to Children's Church, would you pray with me? As we pray today, let's take a deep breath in. Remember Jesus' peace and then breathe it out. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus who reminds us and teaches us how to breathe in your Holy Spirit that then replaces our worry and our fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining me up front, friends. Uh, We are going to head across the hallway now to Children's Church, and anyone up front or anyone out there is welcome to join us in Children's Church. Thank you. Good morning. The first reading today is from Revelations chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from John chapter 20, 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had sent this, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put, my, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. only, if only a Nobel winning prize, a Nobel winning author once wrote, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. The author in question was a man named Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn had experienced firsthand the forced labor camps of the Soviet regime under Joseph Stalin, those camps known as the gulags. And although he mostly wrote novels, he spent much of the 1960s piecing together his experience as a gulag prisoner with, together with interviews and diaries and more into something called the Gulag Archipelago, a three volume work of nonfiction in which he chronicles that reality of those forced labor camps where millions died it is in the first volume of the Gulag Archipelago that Solzhenitsyn makes his stunning observation. The line between good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. 
I confess that I admire Solzhenitsyn's clarity of insight and depth of wisdom. You know, I mean, after enduring the sorts of evils embodied by those Soviet gulags, it would be easy, I would think, to have a more vengeful and revengeful outlook about people. And so to reject any sort of, you know, black and white, yes or no, good, bad dichotomy, at least when it comes to people, there's those evil people and us good people, it takes a certain kind of maturity of spirit, doesn't it? To be able to honestly face the dividing line between good and evil, right where it cuts through your own soul. Couldn't we say the same thing about faith? All too often, I think we, we think that faith is this yes or no, on or off, either you have it or you don't have it sort of thing. But the dividing line between faith and doubt, it too cuts through the heart of every human being, each one of us. Each of us is a complicated mix of belief and unbelief, of trust and fear, of faith and doubt. Those of us who have heard and retold this story about Thomas that we hear in this morning's gospel reading from John, We've often tended to give Thomas a bit of a bad rap. Oh, there's doubting Thomas again. As convenient shorthand, some people even call this Doubting Thomas Sunday because those of us who follow the historic patterns of the church year, this passage from John chapter 20 is always the gospel reading on the Sunday after Easter. For some reason, down through hundreds of years, the Christian church, most of it writ large, has thought that this story about Thomas was so important that we hear it every year. Doubting Thomas language even leaks out of our ways of talking in church into the rest of our lives. With Whenever some chronically skeptical soul gets called, oh, she's always a doubting Thomas. Now, plenty of people have pointed out that Thomas simply wanted the same thing that all the others had already gotten, the chance that they had already had to see the resurrected Jesus up close and personal. And that's why we shouldn't be so hard on Thomas, those people would claim. He just wanted what the others had gotten. But you know, there's another reason I think it's not fair to single out Thomas as the doubter. It isn't just that the others had already gotten the visible proof that Thomas was also asking for. Rather, Thomas is not the only doubter in this story. In the aftermath of what is supposed to be the greatest triumph of all time, the most glorious moment in our Christian story, the resurrection of Jesus on that first Easter morning, where do we find the disciples as our scene opened in this reading? That's right, locked away in a room, cowering in fear. And even after most of them, all of them except Thomas, it would seem, even after most of them had seen Jesus, had gotten that resurrection appearance, had gotten that breath of the Spirit on them that Sarah talked about, a week later, they're still shut up in that same house. So really, perhaps we should not call this story the story of doubting Thomas so much as the story of all the doubting disciples. Either way, though, whether it's Thomas we focus on or the whole group of them, realizing that, you know, that doubt was running like a high-voltage transmission line right across 
the landscapes of their lives. Either way, I don't think that's necessarily something to give them a bad rap for. Doubt and faith are not opposites with one bad and one good. Doubt to be ridiculed and faith to be phrased. Doubt is, in fact, a natural part of the life of faith. After all, to have faith is not simply to believe things that you can prove to be true. Those, that's simply facts. That's what we call knowledge. To believe something we can prove true, that's knowledge. Nor, however, does having faith mean believing in things that you can prove not to be true. That's simply foolishness. No, wrestling with doubt and uncertainty, with the dark night of the soul when you're simply not sure what you believe, but are willing to simply lay yourself bare and depend on the mercy of the God who you even just hope you can trust in. That's all a part of the life of faith. Faith is a journey, not a destination, not an on-off switch. From Jacob wrestling with the angel, to Elijah hiding in a cave, to Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, pleading with God for, quote, this cup to be taken from him. From the very beginning, we have witnessed the people of God holding faith, not despite doubt, but faith in the midst of doubt. After all, at the end of the day, at the end of the story, the great story of God and God's dealings with us, the story isn't first and foremost about us. It's about God. Perhaps the story that we've heard this morning from the Gospel of John shouldn't be called the story of doubting Thomas or the story of the doubting disciples. But instead, it is the story of the Jesus who keeps coming back. Last week, we heard from Luke's Easter story, but I imagine most of you remember at least a bit of John's as well. In John's telling, you may remember the risen Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene, and she mistakes him for the gardener. You probably remember that story. And in that moment of confusion, Mary, or excuse me, Jesus calls her by name, Mary. She goes and tells the news, I have seen the Lord. But still, as we heard in today's story, the disciples that very same night are locked away in a room, bound up by fear. And so, Jesus appears once more. And that's still not enough, apparently. And so, a week later, with the disciples still, or again, uh, locked up in that house, with Thomas this time, Jesus appears yet again, and he keeps coming back, and he keeps appearing to those who need reassurance. Now, at the end of the passage, we heard that Jesus, quote, did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. And that's absolutely the truth, my friends because those signs keep continuing. And the risen Christ keeps coming back, doing other signs in the presence of his disciples. That is, in your presence, in my presence, in our presence together, us, his disciples today. Those further signs of resurrection life are not written in the book because they are still happening here and now, as we witness those tokens of God's victory among us, can we too 
come to belief yet again? Indeed, I do think that coming to belief, coming to faith, it is always a yet again sort of thing. It's not a one-time moment. We are ever and ever again given the chance to meet Jesus again for the first time. We are ever and ever again given the opportunity to trust once more. We are ever and ever again met and confronted by that line between doubt and faith, that line that runs deeply through our own souls. And in meeting that line, discovering God's blessing. Because after all, the story that we've heard this morning is not a story of judgment on poor old Thomas. It is a story of blessing on us. As Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. That, of course, is all of us. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto God, now and forever. Amen. We come in every new day of our journey to that new opportunity to meet Jesus again for the first time, to make the choice to trust once more, and to make the decision to offer back yet again in a new day the best of ourselves, our time, our talents, and our treasures New for us for the first time in about two years, we're actually going to begin passing the offering plates today as we begin again that journey of offering today. If you are someone who wishes to avoid contact with the offering plates, just gently signal that to the ushers and they'll get it around you if you're concerned. Let us be in a time of spirit of offering now.
and let us pray. O God, you raised up Jesus Christ as your faithful witness and the firstborn of the dead. By your Holy Spirit, use us and use these gifts to witness to him, so that those who have not yet seen may come to believe in him who is and was and is to come. Amen. You may be seated. We come also with our offering of prayers to lift up into God's presence the church and the world and all who are in need, trusting in God's mercy. Who's on our hearts and minds to pray for today? Specifically the children in the war strike. We, we, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and especially this day the children. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A few days ago, Pastor Pom Julie, who participated in ELA class and worship service and Bible studies for a year in 2020 in our church, uh, he sent me a prayer, so I wanted to share this. So he went back to Korea last year, and now he is volunteering in, in a, at a Ukrainian uh, refugee camp in Hungary, and he worked on sending relief supplies from the border into Ukraine, and he is helping. Uh, he is helping to run, cleaning, and repairing at the camp. He said uh, that a thousand people come into the camp every day and move to, to long-term accommodation. So pray for the Ukraine people who had lost their. Uh, home and families and for the many volunteers who help them. Above all, please pray for the war will end as soon as possible. Indeed. This was In Lee? No, no. No. Pong Juli. Pong God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Others? From our online worshipers. Yes, we have uh, healing prayers from, from our Sorry, this is from Isabel. <clears throat> Healing prayers for her brother Walter, Queen Elizabeth, and Canada. Uh, peace prayers for Russia and Ukraine. And uh, she would also like to hold up the folks of the uh, Gastown Winters Hotel, uh, especially after the, the loss of two uh, souls in that community. Indeed, indeed. With these and all the prayers of our hearts, let us... Did you have one, Shelley? Okay. With these and all the prayers of our hearts, let us come before God. God of new possibility, you who unlock our most bound up spaces, you who come again to our most weary selves, you who laugh with our most joyful selves, we give you thanks for this day, for the beauty of this creation that we have the opportunity to walk in the midst of, for each other, a community of grace and forgiveness and love to hold us and to embody for us the risen Christ still appearing and working wonders in our midst. We yearn for your new life to spring up, especially in the war-torn places, especially we think of Ukraine today, although we know they are not alone in that strife. And give you thanks for aid workers trying to make the situation as bearable as can be. But, oh God, we yearn for nothing less than a miracle, nothing less than a resurrection of life in that place. A resurrection of peace within us and among us all.
when we continue walking forward, O oh God, even in the midst of our doubts, making the choice to trust once again in you, to trust once again in our Savior and Lord Jesus, to trust once again in the power of your Spirit to make new all possibility. Throughout this day, O oh God, we have named your name and gladness. We've pondered the world that you've called good. We've relished your gift, your call, your task, your love, your grace. We've marveled once more in amazement at the wonder of this Easter Jesus who has died and is alive among us. Soon we will be homeward bound, and when we arrive there, it will be as it was when we left this morning, with anxiety and demand, conflict and pain and inconvenience, except that all things will be yet again made new. Make new by your Spirit, O oh God. Make new the church where we live. Make new the public reality of justice among us. Make new, we beg, the practice of compassion in our neighborhoods. Make new the surge of peace in our violent world. Make new the policies of our governments, <coughs> the workings of our workplaces. Make new, O oh God, and we will be in Easter joy, unafraid, unweary, your glad people carrying among us the marks of the death and the new life of Jesus, the one in whose name we pray, the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
beloveds, go forth from this place, indeed, giving thanks to the risen Christ, giving praise to God's name, and giving your witness that even in the midst of doubt, we can have hold faith together with that doubt and find the miracle of life abundant in that meeting place, in that creative tension where faith and doubt come together to push us beyond ourselves and into God's life abundant. And as you do so, may Almighty God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you.